Hello everyone, I'm Anita Wallace, I'm Chair of the Lymphedema Support Network and I'm delighted to introduce you to Professor Dominic Furness, a microsurgeon with a special interest in lymphedema. Um, do any surgical methods um, help those with primary lymphedema? With that's, that's an interesting question. Um, I think, first of all, we've got to think about what causes primary lymphedema, and that will lead us on to whether surgery is helpful or not. So um, if you look up in the books, or in fact, if you speak to Professor Mortimer, uh, you'll find out that there are hundreds and hundreds of different causes and different types of primary lymphedema. Mm. But I'm a simple surgeon, and to my mind, there are basically three different kinds of primary lymphedema. So the first kind is where there's a failure of either formation or there's been a degeneration in the tiny little lymphatic capillaries. So these are the very first parts of the lymphatic system which pick up the fluid from the tissues. Um, and they're responsible for uh, gathering that fluid and then passing it down onto what we call the lymphatic collectors. So, so these are like the rivers or the, the motorways of the lymphatic system. And the second kind of uh, primary lymphedema in my mind is where there's been a degeneration of those rivers, those motorways, those lymphatic collectors, uh, and they have stopped working. And then the third kind is where there's a problem in the lymph nodes or the lymph glands themselves. So often this is fibrosis, and we see this most commonly in the groin lymph nodes in, in a condition called inguinal node sclerosis, whereby uh, you get fibrosis and scarring within those lymph nodes in the groin, which causes lymphedema to occur in the leg and that's pretty much like secondary lymphedema where usually a surgeon or a radiotherapist has treated the the lymph nodes for for cancer so it's very that that condition is very similar to secondary lymphedema and that is amenable to all the different kinds of um, surgical treatment so reconstructive options such as lva and also if things are much later down the line um, suitable for uh, liposuction. Now, if we think back to the other forms where there's been a failure either of those tiny little lymphatic capillaries or of the lymphatic channels, those forms are not really suitable for reconstructive options. And the reason for that is that the surgical reconstructions usually are using the lymphatic channels. And if those lymphatic channels themselves have failed, you could do a perfect technical join anastomosis with, with a vein, but it still wouldn't be pumping any fluid. And so it wouldn't be expected to make any difference at all to the lymphedema. Unfortunately, um, probably about 95% of people with primary lymphedema have a failure either in those little lymphatic capillaries or in those lymphatic channels, those, those lymphatic collectors. Right. So we find that reconstructive surgery is only suitable for about one in 20 patients with primary lymphedema right. who come to see us in our clinic. Now, the other surgical option for lymphedema is liposuction. And um, in much the same way as people with secondary lymphedema, people with primary lymphedema, if they've had it for a long while, the fluid is, is not just water. It has growth factors and inflammatory factors, and it can cause the fat cells to get bigger in the affected limb. And this can cause what, what we term non-pitting edema, where the swelling is not actually fluid, but the fluid's been replaced by fat. And in much the same way as people who've had secondary lymphedema for a long time may only be suitable for liposuction, the same is true of people with primary lymphedema. So uh, if their lymphedema is um, bad enough and they're, they're um, affected such that they would, would want to reduce the volume of their limb, then liposuction can be a very reasonable option for, for people with primary lymphedema. 
Just one more thing to say uh, about liposuction, particularly in primary lymphedema. So very often, primary lymphedema, as you know, very often affects the, the legs and it can start in the feet. Quite often it can start in the feet and around the ankle. And liposuction is really good for treating the ankle upwards. But you can't do liposuction on the feet because there's, there isn't really a, much of a uh, subcutaneous fat layer. And there are lots of important structures, nerves, blood vessels, tendons, etc., that are very close to the surface. So it's not really safe to do liposuction on the feet. And so the feet post liposuction in, in primary lymphedema, uh, well, and in secondary lymphedema, actually, are, are treated with compression. Um, so it's more suitable for people who have um, fatty swelling from their ankle up, up to their groin. Really interesting, Dominic. Thank you. Learning a lot today. Thank you. <laughs>